How to show interest without being needy when talking to women. Uh, welcome to this video. I'm sure this is a confusing one. This is an awesome fucking video, actually. But you might be confused clicking on this video because this is honestly a little bit of a conundrum. Okay, like how do you show interest without being needy? Because like the minute you show interest, it means that you need something, right? And the truth is it's not, it's not exactly like that at all. So there is a way to make sure that you can thread that needle and navigate that issue perfectly and not do too little and at the same time not do too much because you know that if you do too little, if you don't show enough interest to the girl, she's not even gonna perceive your existence. And if you show too much interest and if you're needy, um, she'll get in immediately turned off. So today, we're gonna learn how to navigate that very fine balance and why it is that so far you haven't been able to do so. So when you do that, you're gonna be able to connect to girls to create um, authentic attraction and uh, get the outcome that you want. Maybe a relationship or maybe some kind of adventure, whatever you want, like it's gonna be possible for you to connect with the girl. So. With that said, I want to stress or I want to call your attention to the links down below because those are all the resources that you need to start attracting the women that you want and to create the connection with them that you want and in that way, the dating life that you want. So make sure that you go down to the description and click around and see what you'll find. Now, why am I such an authority? Why should I be talking about this subject? Why am I the one that's gonna help you resolve this? The answer is that I've been a dating coach for over a decade, so I, yeah, you can say that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to attraction, when it comes to dating, and when it comes to the boys' perspective. And on top of that, I've been a man for all my life, which uh, means that uh, I've definitely uh, made girls feel that I was too needy and I've definitely also demonstrated less interest than would have been appropriate to start some kind of a connection. So I've made both mistakes and uh, through enough blood, sweat and tears, I've learned how to navigate that situation perfectly and thread that fucking needle every fucking time. So this is what I'm gonna teach you to do today. In order to do that, we are going to talk about mindset first and foremost, because once you have the mindset down, everything else becomes a downhill battle. And then we're gonna see how we are going to identify and start stopping that needy behavior that uh, does most of the damage, if we're honest. And uh, finally, we're gonna put that mindset that we learned into practical action so that you know exactly what to do to perfectly thread that needle. Let's talk about mindset. There's four mantras I'm gonna give you. And once you look at life through these mantras, uh, your actions are gonna become dictated by that and everything's gonna become a little bit less hard. Because the reason why uh, you um, cause girls to think that you are too needy is because you don't see relationships and uh, dating through this lens. So the first one is my life comes first, sharing a great experience with her comes second. Why is that? First of all, it is logical. It's because <laughs> sharing a great experience with her is predicated on your life being first. If you are not paying attention to what you're doing and what you're up to, uh, then there's no way that you can share a great experience with somebody, okay? But more than that, moreover, your life should come, should come first, okay? Sharing great experience with her should come second. And that's what she wants as well. She never has a girl honestly wanted her man to put her in first place. Whenever that happens, every time in relationships, we see that when a man puts a girl on a pedestal when a man um, makes it clear to the girl that she is like everything, like the whole relationship falls apart. 
uh, a match of his, his purpose first and his relationship with a woman second so that she can also enjoy what the man provides, right? Now, the second mantra is qualifying interest versus unconditional interest. Okay, this sentence sounds a little bit pretentious, but what that basically means is that when you're interested in a girl right off the bat, unconditionally, that basically means that you're interested in every girl like that. And once she realizes that, she's going to be turned off. There's no way that she likes that. Okay. Three, abundance before choice. Girls have abundance by default. You must create abundance in dating as well so that from there you can make a healthy choice. And if you don't have that, you will be needy. And this is not going to go over very well. And the fourth and final mantra is keeping your powder dry. I got this from, from Jordan Belfort and it just means that you got to fire your cannon when you're good and ready, when the timing is right. And this is a conversation about investment and we're going to talk, we're going to dive deep into that because this is the root of everything. Okay. This is the root truly of why you're appearing and honestly being truthfully so needy. Now, Let's identify and stop all the neediness as a first move. First of all, needy, needy language, bro. Um, before we get into it, it's important that you identify your needy behavior and you start admitting to yourself that you've been needy. Okay, it's, it's okay. Nobody's going to judge you. It's okay. But this is the time to stop. Okay. Start identifying all the behaviors that can be classified as needy. Let's go through them one by one in all of communication. Language. Identify your needy language. Identify all the pleas that you're saying, the pleading and begging and trying. Everything that's try hard. If you're trying to meet her, to, to get her out, to make plans with her, and it's kind of like a grind, stop that. Absolutely no. When you're making plans with somebody, it should be a yes or no thing. It's not, it should not be like pulling teeth and then just dragging it. So be very, very clear. Okay. Next, needy body language. I got a couple of different things here. And the first thing is touching for the sake of touching. And this is a mistake that I see clients of mine make a lot. It's like when they're on a date or with a girl, they're going to start touching her because of some strategy. They're going to start touching her and making sure that they establish that touch barrier because they understand in their minds that eventually that'll lead to some physical escalation and that's kind of the next step that they need to do. But honestly, the only reason why you should be touching a girl is because you feel like you want to touch her, not because of some strategy. The second one is holding hands too early. That is terrible. Clients of mine ask me, okay, when's the perfect time on the first date to start holding hands? This is not truthful behavior. You don't want to hold hands with her. This is way too needy. Let some time pass before you do any of that stuff. Okay. The next thing is too much affection. I was on a date the other day and both me and the girl were very, very physically affectionate. We were like stroking each other's hair and stuff like that. And at some point I realized that even though I personally crave physical attention a lot, and I, I feel that this girl also does uh, as, as a personality, I feel that this craving at, the, at some point had an end. Like there was satisfaction. I was happy, like I was full. And that's when the touching and the affection has to stop. It's okay. And then it can continue again once some time has passed. Okay. There needs to be some space where the girl can chase you, can be allowed to chase you. So contrast all of this behavior with, you know, intermittently pushing her away or intermittently giving her affection. See how much more balanced and beautiful that is instead of like being on top of her all the time. And on top of needy body language or too needy body language, we can add needy posture as well. And the crazy shit about this is like 
whenever I'm in a big street, in a big city, in a big like met metropolitan city, you can always tell, or at least I can always tell who the pickup artist guys are. It's like the ones that have like the vulture-like body language. They're not enjoying being out walking on the street and like approaching a woman. They are kind of like needing something out of the situation. You can always tell by their body language, by how their shoulders slouch forward, how their 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 neck is like kind of leaned leaned forward. Uh, so all of this is very important for both the impression that you're making, but also biofeedback. If you're making sure that you sit tall, you stand tall, you are slow with your body language and demeanor, you're not trying to be on the woman all the time, that gives you first and foremost the feedback that you don't need her. And that's that reinforces that correct balance that eventually will lead to you attracting the woman, to, to her being attracted by you. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to touch on here on stopping and identifying needy behavior is the texting and the reaching out. You want to first fix the metadata. So that means that you can't text back immediately when she... Uh, when she texts you, this is crazy. Just take your time. Make sure that there is a balance between you two. Make sure that the value, the apparent value between you two is on equal terms. Not that like one person is trying to get the other person out or trying to text the other person or trying to ask too many questions and the other person is just like chilling and answering once in a blue moon. Okay, all of this is very needy. Make sure you strike a balance. If you need to double text, think twice before you do it. Now, with all that stuff, we have definitely identified and stopped needy behavior. So now we need to put all that mindset stuff into practical action. And we're going to start with warranted investment. That is the number one reason why girls feel that you're needy. So how do you approach them? How do you make sure that you demonstrate your interest, but at the same time, you're not needy? The answer is investment. How do you place your investment? How do you invest your time and energy and emotions and resources? So let's first look at time and energy. Time and energy investment in a relationship, even from the very beginning, even from the approach, works incrementally. You invest a little bit of energy and time into simply pinging her the first time you approach her. It is so little that you might even approach her over the shoulder incidentally as you were walking by. This is how little investment you have. And if she re reciprocates, now it's time to invest some more. Okay, you cannot... I mean, compare this to like the body language where you walk up to her like in full blast and like you stare at her. Terrible. You can't do that. So you invest a little bit. Maybe she gives you an answer and she matches your investment. Good. Now you can invest a little bit more and then she invests a little bit more as well. Matches your investment again. Good. And you incrementally keep going like that. If she doesn't match your investment, you go down with your investment. And you make sure that you are responsible, you maintain that responsibility for keeping that balance. Okay, now with emotional investment and resources investment, it works a little bit different. You make sure you wanna keep some distance, okay, keep it healthy, keep it kosher, until you know that she's emotionally invested in you, at which time you can allow yourself to emotionally invest back. A lot of clients of mine, I catch making that very mistake. They um, invest emotionally right from the get-go. And uh, a lot of guys have a very tough time with that because the moment the girl catches you emotionally invested in her, without her being at least equally emotionally invested in you first, you're done. That's how the state of affairs is. I am sorry, 
I am just the messenger, but this is how it works. So make sure that you keep your emotional investment back until you know that it is appropriate to, um, to develop, to place. And resources investment, that is kind of up to you, honestly, but unless you wanna be some kind of sugar daddy, I would also suggest that you um, are conservative with investing your resources in a woman, while at the same time not being frugal, because being frugal is also a terrible sign for dating. It's not something that girls appreciate, and it's not something that is generally cool that I would appreciate either. Like being frugal is not okay. It's not a good way to show up. Okay, so the next one is abundance before choice. You need to understand that women have abundance by default. Like women are sought after by men. There's like even <laughs> ugliest chick has a thousand matches on Bumble. And it is the way it is. So your priority here should be meeting girls, not committing to girls. And once you've met enough girls, then you can start making your choice. Now, if you act like that, if you keep in mind that, wait a minute, it is more important for me to make another connection right now than to try and text this girl to get her out. If it's like, if you see she's not like, warm on text, why don't you want to invest your energy into attracting another girl who's going to be a better choice? Just do that. Meet enough girls. And by virtue of meeting enough girls, dude, it's going to be so much easier to be chill and not be needy. Like you won't need to like, like deliberately do it, but you'll just be it on your own by default. You don't, you're not gonna need to fake something. You're not gonna need to hold yourself back from appearing needy even though you feel the, the pull. You're just gonna not be needy if you know, if you meet enough girls. And the way to do that is just meet the first girl and just don't text her immediately. Take two days to text her. And in these two days, make sure to approach five girls every day. And by the third day, when you're texting the first girl that you met, whose number you got, out of the 10 girls you approached after her, like one of them, you're gonna text again. So you're gonna get a num the number of, and you're gonna text. So now you got two numbers on your phone and all of your neediness can be split in, in two halves and you're gonna be half as needy with every girl now. So extrapolate this to like five girls on your phone and 10 girls on your phone. That is great. Now you're matching the girl's abundance. Now you're playing in equal terms. Okay. Next mindset. Qualifying versus unconditional interest. This is what I want you to grasp. If you want a TV and you go into Best Buy, you do have to go up to every TV. Unfortunately, the TVs are not going to come to you. So you do have to go up to every TV, but the money is in your pocket. Okay, so the reason to, the, the way, I'm sorry, to, that you're gonna be demonstrating your interest is by qualifying each TV or each girl. So the way that we're demonstrating interest without being needy, and here's the big answer to, like, to this whole thing, is are you cool enough for me? Like, what do you have going for you more than, more than you looks? Or why should I go out with you? What's a good reason? Um, once you're coming from this place, once you are investing time and energy in girls to get to know them, to then decide if they're potentially a good mate for you, that's not needy. You are still the boss. The money's still in your pocket. That is how this works. And the best way to do that is to sit down and identify your values and then value match in conversation. Make sure that you go after the girl's values and you figure out what they are. So start asking the girl tough questions, questions to which 
she should answer the truth. That will then tell you, is this girl for me? Is, is this girl a good fit? Now, start thinking like that. That is the complete opposite to, wow, I'm already interested in you before I've even really met you. So, instead of being unconditionally interested, be qualifying or inquisitively interested. Like, ask questions. Be curious about the girl. Curiosity is the cure to all of this. Curiosity is the opposite of neediness. Okay. And, finally, your life comes first. This is, I guess, the final nail in the coffin. This is you making sure that you're interested in your life first and foremost, and you develop some security in maintaining your own boundaries. So, I want you to plan exactly what you're gonna do, how your day is going to develop, how your day is gonna run, how you will run your own day, and then, you can add value to the girl's day, to the girl's life by inviting her to that, which is a thing that you would be doing either way. If you're doing something either way and you're inviting other people to join, that is again the opposite of needy. You cannot be needy doing that. You're being the leader. And this brings me to the second point, which is leadership, which is making sure that you always take a point Okay, that you always take initiative. And so that means that you're the first to move, the, the first to have the idea, the first to engage. And actually, and also by the way, the first to disengage, right? That's a great lesson here. Like imagine how I'm the first to engage and you're thinking, oh, this guy is potentially needy. And then I'm also the first to disengage that teaches you a lesson right there. It's like, oh shit, I really, oh my God, I can't believe I thought this guy was needy. That was so crazy, right? And so again, initiative and obviously responsibility as a good leader, like make sure that you take care of everybody, that you are responsible for everybody. Now, all of this is the opposite of needy. If you do all of the above, there's no way that you're gonna fail. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.